welcome to the sugar scoop i'm shelby bauer and today we're going to be making poured silicone molds so i've been making silicone molds for a really long time now um, i used to make silicone molds for my husband for his art projects um, my mom when she was a jewelry designer we made molds all the time so i'm pretty into mold making so of course when i transferred to cakes I, um, I loved making my own molds because you can make things that are unique and if you need something that's not on the market or you know it's a little more expensive to um, buy and you could just make it yourself. Uh, I definitely recommend investing in some silicone mold um, products. So I have a two part product that I'll show you guys. Um, it's an easy one to one ratio and I've used it to make all these pieces. So like this is a giant, um, I took a giant marble and made just a big circle and this is awesome with isomalt because it's silicone it can hold up to the temperature of isomalt and it makes a giant monster's eye or just any kind of big giant bubble or something. Um, this is just a smaller eye and then I'm going to actually be showing you guys how I made these two. So let's get started. So the piece that I'm making a mold out of is really thin and I want to add some bulk to the bottom of it. So I'm using some Sculpey clay and I'm just going to cut it to the shape of the item that I want to make a mold out of. And it's about a fourth of an inch, maybe a little bit less than that. And then just cutting it to the right shape and then I'm going to just clean up the edges. I'm also going to put a little thin strip of Sculpey clay on this, the part that kind of like curls under and it, it, it might be like an undercut, so I didn't want it to get stuck in the mold, so I'm just going to go ahead and shove a little, little bit of Sculpey clay in there. If you guys like mold making as much as I do, please like this video and subscribe to my channel because I will be uploading videos every Wednesday at 2. So now it's time to make our mold boxes. If you've ever made a mold box before, this is a super important step. I prefer to make my own mold boxes just so I save as much of the mold the making material as possible. You can use like a plastic container or something, but you're never going to get the perfect size. So I'm just using a cardboard box. The shiny side that has the printing on it is the side that I'm actually going to pour the silicone into, but it's easier to cut on the back side. And I'm just going to take my piece. Oh, I also <laughs> forgot to say that I put my, my piece with the Sculpey clay on it into the oven following the directions for the minimum amount of time. So it was like 15 minutes. At, I think it was at 225 or something. But definitely look at the instructions of your Sculpey clay. And just baked it straight onto the metal. You, you know, you can't do that if you have a plastic piece. But if you have a metal piece, it works really well. So uh, all I'm doing is making a mold box that all, all you really need is for it to uh, be about an inch taller than your piece because when you pour silicone molds you want it to have coverage over your piece of about a quarter of an inch. So uh, I think half an inch is like ideal but a quarter of an, of an inch is fine. So I'm just cutting out the bottom and I'm doing four sides so I'm just literally making a box so you can see me cutting the sides of the box out right now. And then I'm going to take my piece with the Sculpey clay baked onto it and I'm actually going to take some hot glue and I'm going to hot glue my piece right in the middle of the, of the bottom of the box and then build the sides around it. And that's how you make a mold box. It's really simple. <laughs> you can see how old my hot glue gun is. It's got hot glue stuck all over it. I've been using it forever. So I, I'll go ahead and um, put on one side of my mold box with my hot glue and hot glue is perfect for this because you're just you're gonna tear this apart anyway right after you're done so I'm gluing all around the edge to minimize the amount of silicone that gets underneath and this is because we're doing a mold of just one side so um, I glue that down right in the middle making sure it doesn't touch any of the sides and then I'm gonna just build my my box around it by gluing everything together and you really want to make sure your box is nice and sealed with the hot glue. So I run over 
uh, the sides of, like, all of the sides where the cardboard meets each other, um, on the, on the back part of it, again, just to double check and make sure that, you know, you don't want any product leaking out. Okay, so this stuff is called Sealed It, I think. I'll put a link below. But it's a great, like, waxy substance. And you just paint it over your entire mold box on the inside. And this will keep the silicone from sticking to the uh, porous surface of the cardboard. Because even though we're using that printed surface, and it's a little bit slicker than the normal cardboard, it's still porous. So I'm just coating that. And it's also great because it's kind of thick, so you can stick it into any kind of little holes that might fill up with the silicone, which is what I end up doing because there's like little holes in the side of that antique thing. So now we're ready to pour, and I'm using Copy Flex from Make Your Own Molds, and I gotta say I hate <laughs> these containers because they just are so messy and drip everywhere. It's a great product, it's food grade, and it's a one part, um, one to one ratio, which is really easy. So I eyeball it. It's better to use a, um, you know, <laughs> some way of, oop, I spilled it everywhere, <laughs> some way of measuring it. But you start out in one corner of the mold box, pouring slowly. You want to be about 12 inches above your mold box so that the pour kind of stretches out and gets bubbles out. Um, and then it creeps over your, uh, you know, the thing that you're, you're making the mold out of. So it's going to creep over it and the bubbles are going to pop and it's going to get into all those little nooks and crannies in the designs. I'm probably a little bit more lax when I'm making these just because I made them so many times and I never have an issue. But you can also check out, there's plenty of videos on, um, on makeyourownmolds.com, I think it is, that they show you how to use the product too. So um, this is just how I use it. So you can see it creeping over the um, seashell, looks great. And then I just add a little bit more on top just to make sure that it's that quarter of an inch above the mold. And then I let them set. It takes about five hours for this stuff to set. So now I'm going to release them. This is the exciting part. So I'm literally just tearing this mold box apart and getting my um, silicone piece out of there. And you can see it releases really nicely from, the, um, from my antique piece. I'm just pulling it out. It got a little bit underneath it, but that's not a big deal. You can kind of just clean your mold up with some scissors and make sure that it looks nice. But it copied really well. All my details are there. So let's take out the seashell. And this stuff is really firm, but flexible enough to where you can use it for isomalt and it'll, it'll pop right out. So I wanted to show you guys you know, we made my molds, um, I cleaned them, I washed them with dish soap uh, to make sure that they were sanitary, and I like to put fondant through it, just some like scrap fondant that you have, I already did that, um, to kind of pull up any kind of residue or whatever from whatever you made the mold out of, and since I use those antique pieces, I thought it would be a good idea to just go ahead and double check it and make sure it's really clean. So I'm just going to stick my fondant in there and show you guys how this is going to turn out. I'm excited about these pieces. I think they're going to turn out really pretty. Get it all squishy it in nice and in there. I already did this one. And then I have some isomalt. It's not in the best shape. I've been storing it for a long time. I think it got some crystals in it. Actually, I'm gonna take a little bit of fondant and clean out this eyeball mold. I wanted to show you guys how how cool this eyeball mold is. It's really neat. It's very large. My mom is so weird. She collects literally the weirdest things. 
So she has this, I mean, <laughs> if you have an extensive marble collection, I mean, you know, I'm all for it. <laughs> I think it's just weird. And <laughs> she has the biggest marbles. And I don't know what you do with those. So if you know what, what you do with gigantic marbles, then um, let me know in the comments below. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this sucker up with some isomalt. I'm not gonna fill it all the way because it'll take an eternity to cool down. But I am gonna go grab my torch. Trusty torch. This torch has been with me through thick and thin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the top to get the bubbles out of the top. And you really should always wear gloves when you handle isomalt. That's how I got this gnarly scar, not wearing gloves. But I was working at way higher temperature than I'm working with right now. It's not, not the best excuse. But let's go ahead and do this one too. You can use fondant and like gum paste and stuff to kind of clean out molds. Uh, obviously, don't use that fondant because it's nasty. Nasty now. Do I have anything left? Whatever I have left, I'm going to pour it in this little eyeball mold, see if I can fill it up. Almost there. Come on, little mold. No, I filled it up a good amount. It's going to take a while for these to cool down. So I'm just gonna let all these kind of sit in their molds. Just kind of hitting the top there, getting some bubbles out. And then I will be back and uh, release all these pieces from their molds and show you guys how my molds turned out. So this is an antique piece. And I'm just gonna flop it out there. Looks absolutely gorgeous looks perfect and here's a little seashell beautiful and this was such a pretty like antique um, glass seashell and this was some kind of antique it said wall hanging on it it's it was sterling silver I have no idea where you would use it and then I wanted to go ahead and show you these um, eyeball molds that I was talking about like I said, I didn't use the best quality isomalt because um, it was just kind of old isomalt I had left over. But anyway, it looks pretty good. And you can see how, you know, that would come in handy. Show you the big giant one. Get it out of here. <laughs> it's huge but yeah so you can see how cool that is if you were to paint like an eyeball on some um, edible paper and put it in the back here you have a really cool eyeball and I'm just gonna torch it to show you guys how clear it gets when you torch it you have to be careful not to melt it because it can start to lose its shape but see how clear that gets? Looks super good. And of course you have to seal it. Or else it'll get all wonky looking. But see how beautiful that is? Really pretty, turned out great. And that's why I just, I, I'm obsessed with these um, silicone molds because you can make anything you want to. So the next thing that I wanted to show you guys is um, these pieces are probably hard to tell what's going on. And I went ahead and made some other ones and let them dry a little bit. Um, this is the, this is Madame Lulu's blue denim, which is one of my favorite uh, colors from them. And I added a little bit of Tylos to them. And I'm going to take some of this Albert Ooster silver and I'm just going to kind of brush over it to bring out the details.
I'm also gonna just kind of highlight this seashell so you can see how perfect this freaking seashell is. It's so pretty. I'm like obsessed with it. I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna use the seashell, she, she shell, seashell mold <laughs> a lot. So that turned out really good. Oh, I love these so much. They're so pretty. I should say the cake. Oops, that's too much. Whoops. That one got a little bit too much on it. Turned bright silver. Whoops. I'll have to go over that with some vodka or something. But it's still pretty. Okie dokie. Say bye to the eyeball. You see me? Bye! I hope you guys like this video. Let me know what kind of molds you're making and projects you're working on in the comments below.